Luke, congratulations. The defence rumbles on, but as you just come in there, you thought you were a little bit lucky tonight. Yeah, I, I, you know, not lucky, but I, in a way, it, you know, I don't know what the best word to say, but yeah, I felt very maybe fortunate. You know, that third set, well, I stole it, to be honest. You know, I, I felt like I threw away the second set, uh, especially the first leg, you know, I just give that away, and then I had a good second leg, and Johnny won that one, and then the third leg I did well again. I'm thinking, yeah, you could have been in control here. I feel like sometimes I give away them sets too easy. I need to fight harder with them. But yeah, I, you know, I, after I won uh, won the third set, it was a bit. I think I played better in the fourth set, but yeah, I just tried too hard tonight. You know, that was it. It's an honest opinion. I just tried too hard. Every time you've come in here, you, you've said, oh, "I haven't done this particularly well. I can do this better. I can do that better." But you're in another semi-final without playing anywhere near your A game. You must be able to take confidence from that fact that you're now scrapping your way to victories. Definitely, I think you know. It, you can play as bad as you want, but as long as you're winning, that's what matters, isn't it? You know, I could, I could sit in here tomorrow and then sit in here Sunday, and I could average 82 and 78. But if I'm picking the title up, I, that's all I care about, you know. But of course, you know, I just expect so much from myself. Sometimes I get frustrated. Uh, my doubling in was probably the worst it's been in the last, you know, last year and this year. That's probably the worst performance doubling in. But I got away with it, so you know, I'll never be back tomorrow. I know I'm going to have to double in a lot better because obviously Ryan's a great doubling here on double 16. So yeah, I just. It's hard playing a good friend, to be honest, it really is. But, you know, you, you learn from these experiences and it makes you a stronger person. It's been a strange week. We've had many people coming in here. Obviously, Gary and James singing your praises. We've had Ryan Joyce in here saying you're not just a good player, you're a generational player. Do you, yeah. do you feel that p people are now overthinking playing new countries like they did Phil and Michael before? They're like, hang on a minute, this is something special that I know I've got to play well. So maybe you've got an advantage now before the game even starts. Well, I just think if all these players are going to keep doing this, I can, you know, if they're all going to agree with each other, I can great world peace can't I? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you've got Gary Anderson and James Wade agreeing with each other you know I was f felt like last night a great world peace but you know yeah I, you know they you know their their opinions are obviously really amazing they, they they fill me with great confidence you know there's two absolute legends of the game obviously everyone knows I'm really good friends with James and, and I get on well with Gary but that, I know I'm not influenced what they've said they just you know they just I guess they want a lot more from me I think you know I think I watched James's one. I didn't see Gary's, but I watched James one yesterday. And obviously, he said I could be the second. No, probably not. Phil and Michael will always be above me. But you know, he, he has a point. Of course, you know, it's it's been a great journey for me, and you know, it's it's you know, I, I'm just I'm just happy to win titles. You know, I'm not. I don't look into too much. You know, of what what the media say. You know, sometimes the media can be cruel to you. Know, not not people in this room. You know, the the, the papers and the. The, the clickbait headlines that they put about you, you know, if I, if they put me in the news outlets a lot more, it could be a lot worse me and maybe depress me even more. So, you know, I don't really care that much, to be honest. It's just nice that I take away from what I've, I've seen in the last two days, two great professionals who I look up to that give me credit, that makes me feel good inside. And, uh, you know, if you'd have told me 10 years ago, you know, Gary Anderson and James Wade were saying these incredible things about you, I'd have, I would have laughed at you. It would have been an absolute joke for me. So, yeah, like, it's really great, to be honest. It really is nice, and uh, you know, I'm just trying my best to, to to build this sport into a into a good place. You know, obviously, there's there's so many great players out there. I just want to be a part of them great players, and uh, you know, build the sport into a, a great spectacle and, and give the fans what they want. That's all I care about. Luke, any congratulations. Thank you, Phil. Luke. How does it feel to get that acclaim and respect from from top professionals like James and Gary? Yeah, it, it feels fantastic. It really does. It, it it fills you with confidence. It fills you with joy. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, I get along well with them both anyway. But you know, for them to not—they don't have to say it. They don't need to say it, but they do. And it, yeah, it's, it's fantastic to be honest. It's, it's two legends of the game. You know, two players I, I, I look up to and respect a lot. And you know, they say these lovely things about it. Obviously, it means a lot. So you know, it's it's really nice. Do you feel that your achievements over the last 12 months have been properly recognised? I, I, I do. Yeah, I do by the players for sure. You know, I think the if you got the likes of them two saying these things about me, then of course, yeah, I think them players respect it. They know how hard it is to, to achieve what I've achieved, and um, they're, they're, I think they just want to they just want to give me a little bit of respect, and I think that's just really lovely. You know, but I think we're all like they said about embracing. I think the media just. Just need to embrace the, the sport, not just me or, or Luke or Michael, or you know, just, just embrace the sport. It's in such a great place, and you know, I'm pushing the boundaries for everyone, making everyone work harder and try harder and play better. Because if I do that, then it makes everyone want to be better, and you know, if everyone is better, then this sport's in a, a fantastic place. And just on the game tomorrow, Ryan Joyce, what have you made of how Ryan's performed this week, and what sort of game you expected? I, I think he's been fantastic, Ryan. Under pressure, he's been great. 
So, you know, a lot of people are going to think I'm going to take him for granted, but I won't because I know that he's doubling, double, double 16 in particular. I've, you know, I've played him a lot of times. And I know it's sometimes really, really good. So I won't take him for granted at all. But, of course, first to five will, will bode in my favour. You know, I, I enjoy the longer format. Um, I can reel off and, and play well for a long, long periods of time. I think we've seen that over the last 12 months. So it will help in my favour. But, of course, if I'm not getting in and he's getting in and scoring, then... It's, you know, it's not it's not going to do well for me. So of course, my sc- my doubling has to be better tomorrow to to make sure that it's a good game. Cheers, Luke. Thank you, Luke. You were saying earlier that, that best of five still feels pretty cutthroat. But obviously, as you mentioned there, it goes up to to best of nine tomorrow. How much do you think that weighs in, in your favour against Ryan, who's not been in these these situations before? Yeah, it, I mean, it does. It goes into my favour because I'm used to these long games. You know, Ryan's not. He's I think he's he's had a cut of court. Well caught. Ryan, yeah, yeah, is it one or two? One, yeah, so he has experienced the game, but over the last 12 months I've experienced them long, long format games so many times. So I know how to deal with them, you know, how, to, how long I need to prepare for them, what I need to do in the breaks, you know, all these type of things. So I've got the experience there, but it doesn't mean I, Ryan can't win, of course. You know, he's a, he's a fantastic player and you don't get to a major semi-final by luck. I think he's beaten some f- really good players, so there's nothing to say he can't beat me. I have to be stronger tomorrow have to keep my emotions in check and make sure that I don't give him an inch because if I give him an inch he'll take a mile from me and you know it could be game over very quick so it's up to me to, to work hard and get in front of him and put him under pressure. Um, I believe it was World Mental Health Day yesterday, mm. um, obviously something that you've come through during your darts career and during your personal life as well when you look back at those days and where you are now and what you've achieved how do you, how do you sort of reflect on it? Yeah, I reflect on it in, in such a great way because you know a lot, of, a lot of my life was very, very different three years ago. You know, maybe uh, three or four years ago, whatever it would have been. Um, but now I'm in a good place. My whole life changed. I've got the best fiance in the world. I've got the, the best kids in the world. You know, in my eyes anyway. And you know, I just enjoy life a lot more. And I said I went home on on Tuesday. And usually I wouldn't have done that. But like you know, my family is more important than anything to me in the world. And I think that just creates a happy atmosphere for yourself. You know, makes you happy in, in your own self and you know I come here with no pressure I know there is pressure on my shoulders but I just feel like I come here with no pressure from my family side except sometimes my dad he's, he's always striving for more he always wants me to win and that, that kind of drives me a little bit to be honest like usually if you've won so many times you'd be like all the best good luck you know whatever happens happens but he's always there saying come on you know I want more from you you know he drives me and it makes me a better player so he's still not happy until I've won at least five worlds in about 20 majors <laughs> so uh, he helps me to, to be a better player not in a negative way did they put no. a little bit more pressure on you than yourself absolutely not no. you know it's uh, if anybody's going to put pressure on me it's going to be pressure on myself is going to be me you know, it's all a bit of a joke. I mean, yeah. my, you know, he, he wants me to do well. He wants me to strive for more. He don't, you know, he don't want me to be five-time major champion. He wants me to be twenty major world champion before I retire. So, of course, that 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 helps me. You know, I don't want someone to be happy that I've won five majors. I want him to want me to want more. You know, and that drives me on. And I think that's what helps me. Perfect. Cheers. Thank you. Luke, in that third set, you was two 0 down to to Johnny. He was waiting on twenty. He took out a one four six. You look back at that. Could that be one of the most important checkouts that you've ever taken out? Yeah, it would. You know, I don't know if it's one of the most important. The one for eight last year in the in to win was one of the most important ones I've ever took out. But of course, double double eight in the World Championship final was a bit always be the most important. But yeah, if I pick the title up on Sunday, of course I look back to that one and think you know that was massive. We was in the back room and obviously watching Rob Cross and that one five six. I thought if he wins the game now. He'll look back on that and think, you know, that was a major, major point, a major turning point in the game. But, you know, Ryan comes through that. So, yeah, I mean, of course, if, if I don't take that 146 out, Johnny would have probably cleaned it up, 2 1 down, and who knows what happens. But, you know, I hit that 146, kept myself in, in the set, and managed to nick it. At the end of last year, it might have been after the slam, you said that you can't win everything, and if you get to a quarter final of a major, it's reasonable. With everything that's come since then, you've won virtually everything. Do expectations change? Is it. You're not happy unless you lift a trophy at the end of the week now? Oh, I mean, you know, I'm always happy, of course, but, you know, you never get that satisfaction unless you win. Um, when you've won so much, if, you know, if I pick up a runners-up trophy on Sunday, of course, I'd be happy because I've achieved another a major final, but you'll never get that satisfaction now unless you're picking up major tournament wins. You know, that, that's the only thing that satisfies me. I think that what, that's what makes me that elite player now. I always, I always come walk into this 
you know, walked into this room on Monday, and the only thing that mattered to me was winning the trophy. If I if I lose in the semis or I lose in the final, it's not an achievement. It's a great, you know, I'm happy, but of course it's not an achievement. So, for me, if I want to, you know, put my career to, to levels that the likes of Michael and Phil was ever at, I have to keep winning and keep working hard. So yeah, of course, I, if I don't win, then of course it, uh, it won't be as a big achievement as what, I've, what I have achieved. But uh, you know, it, it's something that I definitely want to, you know, get on my calendar again is to, to win again. Is that a goal for you when you look at what Michael did when he was at his, his peak to try and get anywhere near that? Because he, he did ridiculous things, but you're on that path. Yeah, but I, I just I just will never ever achieve what they've achieved. You know, I could sit in now, and if I do in 20 years, and then I'd be like incredibly shocked. But I just don't think that's possible. I think the level that Phil was at, the level that Michael was at for 2012 and 20 to 2018, 2018, yeah, 2018, yeah. when about that time. Yeah. That, I just don't think that would be matched, to be honest. It's so hard nowadays. I think he won, nearly won everything in six years, and obviously Phil, that just level won't be matched. But, of course, I'm just happy to try and you know, achieve as much as I physically can before you know, all these youngsters you see right now, all these 11, 12, 13 year olds here in 100 averages. You know, they're going to be here in five, six years. Hopefully I can achieve as much as I can before it's too late. <laughs> Cheers, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Lou, just back to your opponent for tomorrow, Ryan, obviously. He's from the North East. He plays his format more than most. On paper, he seems an easier draw than a James Wade or an Aiken Aspen, who he's knocked out. But do you see it that way? No, absolutely not. I think he's beat Nathan Aspen, he's beat Josh Rock, he's beat Rob Cross. That's all three play awesome. yeah, three players in the top 16 in the world. He'll relish the challenge tomorrow. I think that's what I would what I would do if I was him. I'd be looking forward to it and thinking, well, I've got nothing to lose, and he hasn't, to be honest. If he doesn't win, then he'll probably look at it and think well, that's a great achievement. You know, Forty thousand pounds on the rankings, you know, it's a good achievement. But he's got nothing to lose, and for me, I've, I feel like I've got everything to lose. You know, it's my opportunity to win another major, of course. But you know, I'm going to have tough, two tough games to, to get through. Um, but like I said, I just won't underestimate anybody. You know, I never would. You know, I didn't underestimate Johnny tonight. I knew it was going to be a tough game. Um, and I won't do the same with Ryan tomorrow. Yeah, he actually said that he doesn't feel pressure when he's playing someone statistically better than him, mm. only when he's playing people below him in the rankings. So do you think that might put a bit more pressure on yourself? Or how, when uh, you're in a different position now, looking down at the competition... I was going to say, that, that would happen to everybody <laughs> that I play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how was that when you was in his position a couple of years ago? Um, sometimes when you're playing someone that's higher above you, I felt more pressure because I felt like if you can win, and you, you, your name's in the headlight, headlines, you know, it, it could change your life. And it's, it did when I beat Michael in the the twenty twenty one UK Open. It, it changed everything. So of course, there's a there's a there's a chance for Ryan to like put his name in lights if he beats me, the reigning champion, and of course he's in a final. You know, all these great things can happen. So you can think about it in the moment, especially if you get a chance to win. But, uh, you know, Ryan's not been in this situation very much, so I don't know how he's going to feel. He might feel really relaxed and be fantastic, or he might feel the pressure. Who knows? But I know I've been in this position so many times now. I know what to do, how to react, and, and how to cope with these long games. So, the fa the, the, of course, it's in my favour, but that doesn't mean nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.